and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by Monster Energy on ESPN LA 710 across the USC Trojans Media Network. I am Jordan Moore alongside Sean Cody, Cody Kessler, and our head coach, Lincoln Riley. Fresh off a tremendous battle, USC versus Michigan. Trojans come out on the wrong side of it, but uh, certainly uh, everything a neutral could have asked for, but uh, nothing neutral about the way we look at things here in L.A. Monster Energy, the official energy drink partner of USC, tear into a can of the meanest energy drink on the planet, Monster Energy Unleash the Beast. And USC's head coach interview is presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you taking the time, as always. Yeah, a difficult one. Uh, uh, you know, you have to be so proud of the fight of your team, but uh, ultimately, what did you think was the difference in the game? Well, I, we dug ourselves in a hole, you know, in the first half. You know, we gave up a couple of long plays uh, defensively, uh, didn't – Really get much going, uh, you know, until the last couple of drives offensively really started slow, you know, and that's, you know, it's obviously not the recipe that you want going on the road. You get the crowd into it, um, which, you know, the crowd was, was definitely a factor in the game. There's no question about it and good road atmospheres. It typically is. And so, yeah, we had to, we certainly had to, to rally. We played an awesome third quarter, um, you know, really kind of flipped it, made some big time plays. Um, you know, just uh, did, did some really good things on all sides of the ball. Really did for the majority of the fourth quarter as well. So you know, we we just had a few, just a few too many mistakes. And I mean, we were, you know, we we have one less of any of about a hundred things, and then we're all sitting here feeling a lot different right now in terms of result of the game. And so, uh, yeah, it was obviously awesome to see the team rally back and put ourselves in position to win it. Um, all sides of the ball, you know, contributed to, to getting us to that point. And then all sides of the, you know, each side of the ball had a chance to, you know, to, to finish it off there at the end. And we weren't quite able to get it done agonizingly close. And that's, uh, but you play good teams on the road. And, and uh, that's, that's sometimes what the margins are. And I think we leave it excited because we felt like we, we certainly didn't play anywhere near our best ball, you know, and we still, Came with, uh, you know, within one, you know, last second, fourth down snap to, to beat the defending national championships champions at home. And again, just don't feel like we, you know, we played really hard. We had some guys that played outstanding, um, but we, we made a few too many mistakes that we've got to grow and learn from. Coach, you, you mentioned the, the slow start there, and I'm sure, you know, after a bye week, you want to start fast against the team there. And there's probably a million answers to this question. But what do you think it really attributed to that to that slow start, you know, after a bye week or tough environment or, or I'm sure it's a multitude of answers? Yeah, I mean, we just we just didn't make some of the plays, you know, just um, really on either side. I mean, really, the the two long plays defensively that got out, we we had we had people there. One one we were misaligned, which we weren't misaligned much in the game, but we had an alignment error on one and uh, you know, and just had an execution error on the other. Uh, we had some opportunities to get going offensively. You know, we dropped the ball right there and on the on the first series. It would have been a first down, and you know, you get your momentum and kind of get going. Um, and we just we just we kind of played musical chairs with some of the the errors offensively. Um, we had some errors at, at all positions that that hurt us, especially against a really good defense like that. And so, um, yeah, no, it's not certainly not what you draw up, but you but you got to go. You got to go find a way to dig yourself out of it, and we did. And I think there was a very much a confidence in the locker room, even at halftime, that was like, you know, we're right in this. We haven't done played great. We've had some tough breaks, you know, go against us, kind of like the tip ball right there at the end of half, you know, that that you know would have been an easy pass interference or a catch. I mean, you know, so we, we, I, I think there was still a lot of confidence. I know there was with our team at halftime that we were going to get back in the game. It was not a panicked locker room. They, they knew that we left some things out there that, that were within our control that we could go do better in the second half, and, and we did that. Coach, how valuable is it, especially for some of the younger guys on this football team, to play in that type of environment this early on in the season and use that experience going forward? What should, you know, playing, playing in that environment and then playing the LSU game should yeah. pay dividends yeah. for us. I mean, we've been in a – you know, a, a pretty heavy hitter, you know, neutral, and we've been in a pretty heavy hitter on the road against quality football teams, talented opponents, um, you know, two of the more talented rosters in America. And so, and we've, we've obviously put ourselves right there. So yeah, no, it's, you expect it to pay dividends. We've got some other big road tests coming up. We plan some other really good football teams starting with this week. And, and so, you know, that, that needs to pay off. And I believe it will for this team because you, you, you know, the, the best teams, take adversity and they find a way to flip that into becoming a better team and a closer team and learning and growing. And I believe this team will do that.
You're listening to the head coach Lincoln Riley on Trojans Live. You know, we were talking about this before. You know, people always think about the the crowd noise affecting you know the offensive line with false starts, and, and that can be an issue at times. Also, hard to get off the ball sometimes, particularly for those guys on, on the edge when it's that loud. You made a change at the tackle spot, shuffled things around at halftime. Did, did you feel like that sparked you? What what went into the sort of offensive line shuffle to try to get that unit going a little bit? Oh, some of it was was changing some guys out. We had a couple of uh, injury things that we were dealing with too, so the, the answers a little bit all over the place there. Um, but yeah, no, that's the. I mean, that's the toughest position to play when you play in a great road atmosphere. It just it just is because it's it's so much of that is is based on timing and and knowing you know your snap count, whether you're loud, whether you're silent, however you do it. There's a million different ways to do it, um, and. You know, when you take that advantage away from the offense, it's it's. I mean, you, I don't care what level of ball you watch, watch college, watch NFL. When you get in a raucous environment, then that that it is a challenge. And then, then when you add on top of it, you're playing arguably the most talented defensive line in all of college football. You know, that's that's what it is. And so, you know, we had some guys that came here and battled. I was really proud of Tobias Raymond. It was his first, you know, real, real snaps yep. for us. And, and he came in and did some really good things. Um, and I thought in some ways kind of settled us down a little bit. You know, all of our young guys had, like, they had their good plays. They had their bad plays. There was a couple of times where you could tell, all right, this is their first time in one like this a little bit. And uh, and I thought it, that there was a, a couple of points where, you know, I thought we – we we lost some of the the trust in, in kind of what we were doing and, and tried to do some of our own things and sometimes that can make it worse. You've just gotta you just gotta stay with it and you've got to keep hammering away. And we had some moments where we settled in. But um yeah, no, that's that's about as tough as it's gonna get. And I think our group will grow, learn from it. There's some things we can do better as coaches. And and listen, I mean there's there, we had, we still have plenty of opportunities, you know, with the skill position guys and everybody else to make that make the plays um, to to certainly to win that football game. So it's always a it's always a shared effort, regardless of how it turns out. Coach, I heard you talk about it a little bit in, in the post game. You know, you wish maybe you had a couple calls to call back. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's every game. You know, you you have that, and no players had. You know, I, I remember sitting in games. I wish I had that play back. So, coaches, players, everyone feels that way, and maybe that that four minute situation. When you maybe you want to run some clock, what what went into the the approach, the thought, the attack you wanted to be on, on, in that four minute situation? Yeah, no, we ran the ball first down. Um, you know, had a you know just a, an okay run. Um, you know, we called the play on second down that, that gave Miller a little bit of an option, and it, the second down call was a bad call. I mean, it just it was. I didn't I didn't put him in a good position there, and that's the the one I most wish that I had over. Um, you know, we we false started on the third down. We were in a long yarded situation. There's still a ton of time left. And so, you know, we called the uh, we called the shovel pass, which we felt like was a you know pretty safe completion. And we just we we, we had a couple of breakdowns because yeah. had we been able to get the ball to Woody, he'd actually probably still be Space. running right now. <laughs> so yeah, I mean it would have been a first down and maybe quite a bit more. So I mean, yeah, but the second down call is one I I you know I regret and I told the team that. I mean that's we we all own in it. We all have things we can get better, and I got to get better too. Coach, three of your first half drives started inside your own 15. Two of those started inside your own six. How difficult is it as an offense and as a play caller to really get into your game plan and get into a rhythm when you're constantly backed up in that environment? Yeah, and it was in their la- on their louder side of the stadium yeah. too. So that, that, that didn't uh, play out just perfectly. But it, it is what it is. Like, you got to go get it done. You know, we started backed up against uh, LSU and, and, you know, got the ball out and got moving. So no excuses. We had opportunities. Um, you know, we, we missed a couple of blocks early in the we dropped a couple of balls. I mean, you know, we just we we had opportunities to to get it going, which then, you know, it's kind of like you know how the Texas game played out with them. Texas, you know, played well early, got out to the lead, and then you could tell the crowd and all that was neutralized a little bit. And obviously, if you can do it, that's great. But we, it, it is more challenging ending up back there offensively. But you still got to find a way to get it done. All right, more to talk about with Coach. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. And hey, Trojan fans, celebrate every Trojan win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Ralph's the day after the win. Download your digital coupon from the Ralph's app to score your free donut at any Los Angeles area Ralph store. USC versus Wisconsin is the game this week. The big premiere, the home opener in the Big Ten, uh, presented by iTrust Capital. It is a 12.30 kick on CBS. We will go on at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time right across the USC Trojans. 
Trojans Media Network. As I said, Coach is going to stay with us for one more segment on Trojans Live. Back on Trojans Live, when you got bit good beer and good vibes, it's all Buenas. Don't Buena Vez Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired, imported from San Diego, located near you at find.stonebrewing.com. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Cody Kessler, and the head coach, Lincoln Riley. Uh, getting you set for USC versus Wisconsin, presented by I Trust Capital on uh, Saturday afternoon. Wanted to ask first, uh, Coach, I know a lot of people were concerned about uh, Makai Lemon. That was a scary one. Uh, how's he doing? He's doing good. He's doing good. He's, he's rebounded uh, back well. You know, I think as good as you could possibly hope for with that, that scare of a situation was kind of a unique play. It had ended up kind of the, the whiplash effect, and I think it was more of the, the helmet hitting the ground than the actual hit, and I think that caused it. So, But no, it, you never, obviously, never never want to see that, and uh, no, thankfully bounced back well and was able to fly home with us at night, and, and it's doing very well. Obviously, a couple of big plays on defense to, to clean up and get figured out, but other than that, Coach, I mean, pretty a clinic drill in the run game. Obviously, you can't take those on. They're going to make 15, 20 yards on that. You don't know what the average is going to break out to, but I thought defensively guys were attacking, especially the linebacker group, Eric Gentry, Mason Cobb. Those guys, that linebacker group has really been, I think, playing solid for you. How, how's the plan for them been? Yeah, it's been good. They, they've done some really good things um, You know, defensively. I mean, we left that game feeling like we won a high majority of the snaps, but you know, you got to you know the great ones also put a lid on the, on the you know closest. on the big ones where their big ones maybe are 15 instead of 40 you know and I yeah. mean I, that's that you know it's certainly going to be a you know something that we, we're going to harp on and felt like that those plays were there to make just like the other you know the other however many were there as well and so yeah no I, I am I like the I like the physicality that we're playing with the edge that we're playing with and I think you're you're seeing it at, at all three levels of the defense which I think is good you, you may always have like I think an average defense, you might have you know one guy here, or one guy there doing it. It's when you see it collectively, yeah. you know, that you you really you know see the makings of a really good group. So no, I am. I'm proud of the way we're competing, playing. Um, you know, they're definitely some that we want back, but a lot of really good football on that tape. Coach, I know there's probably some throws and some plays that Miller would like to have back, but but overall, I thought he played well and he handled himself well and, and he took some big time hits hits and showed his toughness. How would you evaluate your quarterback's performance in his first really true road start? Yeah, he played. He played well. Um, you know, he had, you know, he had a couple of decisions uh, that we would want back. A couple of balls over the middle um, uh, that that were a little closer than we would like. Um, missed a couple of throws, not many, but yeah, he hung in there. Obviously, you know, he had to he had to make some throws under duress, and he did a good job in the pocket. Did a pretty good job with his ball security. Um, I thought he stayed pretty steady throughout the day so um, and, and managed a group and, and that was important because you had to a game like that as a quarterback test your patience and and it tests kind of your resolve and I thought he was incredibly you know steady and a great mindset the entire way through and and he certainly gave us a chance to win. You have to turn the page this week, and I'm sure you already have uh, with the team. You've talked on this show already, uh, you know, this season about every week brings its own sort of, you know, mental challenge, mental test. What What, what is this week's? Well, we play a really good football team, you know, and, and you got to, you know, physically and mentally, you gotta, you've got to rally and get past, you know, whether you win the Michigan game or you don't win the Michigan game. Like, you got to get on with it. You know, this is a really good league. There's a lot of really good teams. We got, a, we got a really good football team coming in here that's uh, extremely well coached. And uh, and so, yeah, I mean, you're just gonna have to be ready every week. It is. There's a little bit of, uh, there, you know, the the team that survives the best throughout, you know, this, you know, kind of elongated college football season or what has a chance to be is, is you know, those teams are going to be the ones left standing in the end, and you got to be able to do it week in and week out. So, another big challenge for us: physical football team, good football team coming in here, and. Uh, you know, they got to get our full attention and, and we're going to have to be at our best. Yeah, you got a team coming off a bye week. Obviously, they lost their quarterback the following week. Look like Braden Locks will be in there for them. What is it? What is that? What are the challenges of presenting when you don't get a lot of have a lot of film on, on a quarterback after a bye week? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I mean, the obvious things is they, you know, this kid's played some ball, you know, so I mean, this is not like it's his first time ever playing. He's played some ball. Um, he you can tell he knows certainly what they're doing offensively. Um, so. Uh, but yeah, no, you obviously know now that they've had, you know, a couple of weeks, obviously knowing who the guy's going to be and, you know, game planning and building it around and I'm sure pouring the reps into him. And so, um, yeah, you got to be ready for 
uh, a very prepared guy that has played some college football and has some really good tape out there. So they, they do some really good things schematically. Um, they've got some they've got some explosive skill position players. Wisconsin, you always think about, you know, the offensive line and backs, and they Ron certainly Dane. have that as well. That's what I yeah. think. Just Ron yeah. Dane, just running over people. Yeah, you think <laughs> about that. Ron Dane and all those corn-fed uh, <laughs> yeah, offensive yeah, yeah. linemen, yeah, right? So yeah, they they you know they're still they, that still certainly exists now. So yeah, we we got some you know we got a big challenge ahead of us, um, and certainly got to handle it well. Coach, you talked about it briefly already, but the offensive line did struggle a little bit on Saturday, especially in pass protection. How do you get that fixed, you know, going into this week against Wisconsin with only five days to prepare? Well, there's just there's just a lot of things that can be better. You know, again, the the you know, we can put them in better positions. I think these guys are gonna grow and improve. I, I think also, again, you gotta, you know, there ain't gonna be a tougher challenge than what we just faced yeah. for all the other reasons around. And so, you know, we wanna build into being a group that can be, you know, not just effective but dominant in those games, but that that's to do it at that position against that quality of a group in that type of atmosphere is that's like the pinnacle for offensive line play. Yeah. I mean, like that's what the very best of the best do, and so that's where we're building towards it. But I have a lot of confidence in our group. I have a, a lot of confidence. I've seen a lot of great things. You take the first three games as a whole. Um, I have seen a lot of great things, um, and I think this group is going to continue to improve. We've got good leadership in that room. We have talented young guys that are going to get better fast. He had to play without uh, Lake McCree for, for most of, of Saturday. Certainly felt for him everything that he's been through to, to get back at healthy was playing so well. Uh, the rest of the guys uh, we haven't seen a ton of in their careers. Tell us about that tight end room and sort of what, 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 you're, what you're working with. Yeah, I thought Kate Eldridge and, and Walker Lyons came in and did some, did some good things. They did. Um, they, they obviously took the, the, the load of the reps after that. Um, you know, Cade played very physical. Walker came in there and did some really nice things. Those guys have uh, improved quickly. Um, you know, having having Lake there is a great example. You know, for them has been important. And you know, Cade has especially has been able to get a lot of reps around here. Um, even going back to like last year's bowl game, um, all of that time. So he has improved drastically. And Walker just continues to get better and better the more time that he's with us coming off of his mission. Um, so yeah, two talented young guys that are hungry, they're eager, and uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't expect to miss a beat. Lake's a great player, you know, you know, hate to not have him, uh, you know, have him here right away, but um, we'll get him back soon. And in the meantime, you know, those guys, I have full confidence in the, in their ability to go in and execute and play well. It's another Big Ten battle coming up at the Coliseum Sell on out. Saturday. Sellout two have been announced already, maybe more to come. Uh, it's quite a stage that this league is presented and the Trojans take it inside the Coliseum on Saturday. USC versus Wisconsin presented by I Trust Capital. Kickoff at 12.30. We will go on at 10.30 a.m. Fight on Trojans and fly on with ONT. Ontario International Airport is a proud sponsor of our USC Trojans. Visit SoCalSoEasy.com to book your journey through ONT today. Thank you to the head coach Lincoln Riley. Up next, Deuce Robinson. He grabbed a big touchdown against Michigan. The two-sport athlete is next on Trojans Live.